So my guest is already here. He is Olumide Kaede Omoshebi. He is a lawyer and the CEO of Nurses Health Initiative. Good morning to you, the good barrister. Good morning, Madam. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Uh, it's not too far to say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year still to yes. everybody. Till <laughs> January is over. Right. If someone was in February, we'll still say Happy New Year. Just before we begin to say Happy Valentine. <laughs> but I hope everyone is doing good. Last week's episode was quite an episode. You know, we had a guest in the studio with us, Abisola, and my goodness, her story was something else. Her story was something else. But uh, how is she doing, by the way, since last week? Yeah, she's fine, she's fine. We still we were chatted early this morning. Okay. Early this morning, and it's just seven, so it was five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. All right. So let's get into the conversation today. We're continuing um, on the same line of last weekend, which was titled Humble Beginnings. So today is the second part of that. So still Humble Beginnings part two. You know, don't do it back then, especially because part two can be before. Let's see how long this particular blog post that lasts for. But today is the second edition of Humble Beginnings. So I would um, allow Lumidi to give us his introduction. And before you know it, we're going to get to the phone lines and hear from you with experiences, questions, comments, etc. Good morning, everybody. Once again, good to 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 to. What did I say to speak to you this yeah, morning? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Thank you for always making it uh, a point to wake up early to join us um, on Nation K three sixty. I really appreciate, it, especially those that have been with us since the beginning. So uh, last week. We started uh, a topic I titled Humble Beginning. Now, the reason for the word humble is to spread this topic very thin so that we deal with every part of the humble beginnings. Now, uh, a quick recap is that the word humble is uh, defined as the opposite of pride, that is the direct opposite which is meekness and modesty in behavior attitude or spirit not arrogant uh, the first definition of humble is in regards to the character of a person which is meek modest not thinking of themselves too highly but the second definition of the word humble describes the economic status of a person which is uh, to say Olumide is from a humble home it means he is from more likely a poor home now. Oxford defines the word humble here as the word with the word poor, which is an adjective meaning lacking sufficient money to live a standard considerably comfortable or normal life in a society. Another definition by Cambridge is having little money or few possessions or lacking something important. Uh, Merriam Webster says lacking material possessions relating or characterized by poverty. So the problem here is when we begin to think someone's humble nature and someone's humble background means that both are humble. Mm. I can come from a humble background but does not mean I am humble. Now this poses a problem with people that believe in this uh, in this saying. How, how did this even come to pass? Lots of people would come and say I knew him when he had nothing. I stayed by his side. I helped him till he became somebody and now he has dumped me or He's cheating on me or now, you know, you can't even talk to him. He's so arrogant. He's so proud. And the men will say, I brought her from nothing. I made her who she is. I sent her to school. I did this. I did that. And the question has been why? And the answer is because people think when you get someone from a humble background, which means a poor person who cannot afford your, your kind of standard, and you believe you can raise them to your standard, and uh, you know, marry and live happily ever after, 
that is a problem. Because the truth is, you can never know the character of a person who does not have money, especially when you are their benefactor. When someone is taking care of you, you are the source of livelihood, you are the source of income, you are the source of sustenance to them. When they are hungry, they know that, and let me just call you, will send. You cannot know their character. You don't even know if they resent you, if they are envious of you, if they are jealous of you. But you know, you see them very respectful, very polite, and then you say, ah, this is a good guy, this is a good girl, he has respect, he has morals, you know, he's always in church praying. The issue is that if he had money, would he still be in church praying and not flexing in town or not just having time? So the question now is, can I marry someone below my social class or standard? The foundational truth here is that you cannot know the real character of a person who does not have money because they cannot afford to show you their character. They don't have the funds to back up their character, so they would be subsistent. Let me not say that. They will be submissive to you. They would be kind, polite to you as long as they can get what they want and now when they are now okay you will now know whether they truly love you or not when you are a means of survival to some you need to understand that there are some people who are raised to love there are some people who are raised to survive when you are with someone who to them you are the means of survival then their character is in the freezer. They will be nice, polite, they will go out of their way. You say, this guy is so kind, he's so... But no, he just cannot afford to show you his character yet. So when you ask me, I tell you, always marry within your social class. If you are working and you are earning, date someone who is working and earning or has a business and is earning as well. Someone who can afford themselves so they don't have any reason to hide character from you because what they can afford it as well they can afford to show you their character they are not looking up to you to eat they are not looking up to you to you know so please ladies and gentlemen stop this beauty and the beast this rich poor this educated illiterate macho it always it is always full of insecurity uh, somebody who came to me the, the man kept saying is it because you have money if there would always be insecurity you are behaving like that to me because you have money then when they are now okay you are now here anyway because i've been keeping quiet all this time it's because they have been they could not just afford it they couldn't afford to annoy you they couldn't afford to lose their source of income now on uh, wednesday there's an uh, there's an ongoing case in Kano uh, about a chinese man mr fran i call him fran who stabbed his girlfriend to to death last year it, it happened um, last year but the court case started uh, last um, no this wednesday so um this is how it happened. He said that the girl got his number from a friend and called him and said that she loves him and by the grace of God, she will marry him. So they started their relationship around July 2020. Then she started asking for money. He gave her all that she wanted because he was in love with her. She was really pretty. You know that he transferred 60 million to her bank account. Hmm? He transferred 60 million naira to her bank account, 18 million naira for her to start a business, 4 million to get a house, 6 million for university education, amongst other things, and he brought proof. So he was like, whenever he goes to see her, the mother always welcomes him with open arms. 
then only for they started their relationship in 2020 only for him in 2022 to hear news that he had secretly married another person he was heartbroken and disappointed so he moved away from Kano to Abuja she now kept calling him and chatting with him and continued demanding money he did not answer he was angry then later she contacted him and told him that she was divorced and asked him to come back to her and promised to marry him for a second time okay. he was distraught and um, you know she asked for money to continue her house project in Abuja because he was the one giving her money to build the house he now told her that he does not have money and she was angry mm -hmm. and stopped taking his calls she thought he was broke that was why uh, and he wasn't spending as much money as before she now angrily said she has found a new lover and sent the picture of the new lover to him on whatsapp that was what provoked him he traveled there called her out and stabbed her now the issue is to her it is obvious that this man is a source of income is a means of livelihood and that is the problem she said she was the one that contacted him told how she loved him and everything he's a chinese man so it tells you that this is not a nigerian problem this is a universal problem where a lady was a source of income can you imagine 60 million naira he transferred to her account the girl is very young but now she's dead provocation is what he's going to plead that is what he is pleading because how can you after spending almost a hundred million on you you marry another person he keeps quiet he leaves the town he leaves an entire cattle uh, cattle for you and moves to Abuja you now start taunting him in you know this is the problem stay within your social class stop if you want to help somebody help somebody if you want to help, help, don't marry your, what do they call it, is it destiny don't, helper? Don't marry don't, help. You know, it's not yeah, for marriage, if you want to help, if you feel bad about, ah, uh, you want to help this person, help them, but it is not a sign or call sign for marriage. I think I have said enough and, um, on this, please, within your social class, within your emotional let me not say iq you see humor is very important when you have to have corresponding sense of humor you understand there are people that i have a friend a younger friend who i don't know how they got i don't she's pretty i think it was the beauty but the sense of humor is like east to west she doesn't get it because she's not as exposed so at times when he's cracking a joke she gets offended and what do you mean? And he will say, ah, it's a joke. Like, so he would have to, have to explain the joke before she gets it. So now when he wants to send text messages, he has to put under joke. Do you understand? So mm. I'm now wondering how your discussion will be, you know, when you are, you are laughing, the other party, the person is looking at, because you don't even, you're not exposed. You don't have the same uh, similar or corresponding uh, exposure to know your kind of humor you have to go with someone who you are connected to with one way or the other now uh let me that is that with humble beginnings and social class domestic violence and abuse ladies and gentlemen is uh, fighting back you know, when you are fighting against something, you've raised campaign seminars, you've gone round, you're fighting against the cause, and suddenly uh, it starts fighting back. This is what it is. Last year was a year of deadly domestic violence. I'm waiting for domestic and sexual violence agency to bring out their numbers for last year. The year before the last was 10,007. That was 27 cases per day last year was worse the fatalities were worse but now look at thursday was 12 tabby mm -hmm. yeah 12. thursday or friday was 12. Thursday, 12. now january we just have 
we've had just that was on Thursday, it was 12 days. Nyeche, in 12 days, we've lost five people in 12 days to domestic violence and abuse. Five in 12 days and this year. Cases you are privy yes. to. You see, not, the, not even the entirety, not even the unreported, just the few. And there was one that even uh, was very funny to me last year. Um, Lawrence Itakme on the 5th of December killed his wife over an argument on water, a sachet of water. Now, this year, one uh, Mr. Ndubisi Wilson from Enugu married the four children to Anene Ogochuku was killed over an argument concerning a loaf of bread. We've also lost one, not even to the husband wife, but co wife. Co wife set the other wife ablaze in an umbra. I, I don't understand how, when it is toxic, I say leave because a living dog is better than a dead lion. Life is what we are all about, not uh, a status called marriage but you know when you look at the book of proverbs 24 3 to 4 it tells you by wisdom a house is built and by understanding it is established by knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches wisdom is what builds a home it is not prayers it is not fasting it is not quoting scriptures it is wisdom also, the Bible tells you, sorry to those that are not Christians, that wisdom is the principal thing, and in all you're getting, get understanding. In fact, in Hosea, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Not lack of prayers, not lack of fasting, but lack of knowledge. That is what defines, what separates divinity from humanity. It is knowledge. They say the fear of God is the beginning of Wisdom and the knowledge of the Almighty is understanding. Everything revolves to knowledge and understanding. Where you leave knowledge and start praying, where you leave knowledge and start going for prophecy, when you leave knowledge and start consulting people, you know, don't consult how far you consult, you go for where all you need is knowledge. And knowledge is just very simple. A wise man sees trouble from afar and hides himself, but the simple, the foolish, walk into it. Now, my frustration, I want to just go off, totally off now. My frustration is the fact that our parents, elders, and religious leaders are responsible for the decadence we have today you 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 I, I sent you something okay we get people committing crimes and the first thing is they come with some family member who says uh, please we know he has killed somebody please release him let us settle it the next thing another set of people committed another crime and yes we know he has defiled this and the iron pastor so 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 please let us work it out we have now become a nation that perverts judgment and justice so we recycle these people back in the community the issue is that the churches the homes the offices are full of these people and the bosses know who they are but cover them until other people fall victim again I have told and begged my children, I have trained you, I have told, taught you how to be responsible men, God-fearing. If any of you go and commit a crime and comes, they call me that I should come, that my son is involved in this, God forbid, or my daughter is involved in that, I am not coming. If I am coming, I am coming to help the prosecution. 
But when there is now no I, I, no consequence to actions, every you see, I was with some some uh, law enforcement agents, and they told me that the biggest problem they have in execution of justice are these spiritual leaders and family members. They will come, pastor so 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 will come to beg for someone who just killed someone. That is there something we can do? You know, God said we should forgive. And then that person, they are pleading, pleading, pleading. Then they go and bring bigger pastors. You know, if this pastor, they're not going to bring it. And that one will come. But what kind of rubbish is this that they even call you? There are some things that some people should be afraid to even call you. To call you and then you belittle your position. And you come where you are not support i don't even understand and you start telling them to pervert justice that is to let us arrange let us see how we can let him go he will not do it again i will do you know how many people would have been saved if only justice took its course deuteronomy 27 19 says cursed is anyone who withholds justice to foreigners, orphans, widows. Foreigners are people that are not related to you. You bring curses on yourself and you think it is in the name of God or by the bond of family. You need to have trained your children so that they will give you rest in their old age. Not that in your old age you will be running from one police station to the other trying to bail, trying to do... No child, no family member can call me except they have been wrong, wrongly or falsely accused because we have taught you well 